Hello everyone, and welcome to a new video. And, as you can probably tell by this stupid fast rotating Kerbin, I, I, I've done something a little bit different today. I don't know, just, just let me hop into the game and I'll show you, alright? So, we go to the space center and, you know, looks normal, right? Then we go to the tracking station and... Kerbin's radius is 18,000 kilometers. That's right, I've scaled everything up by a factor of 30, so... <laughs> so everything is like three times the size of the real solar system now, like, and because the terrain is the same size, Minmus is actually spherical for once. So you can just see everything else around here, it also... <laughs> that moment when Drez has a radius of 2,000 kilometers. Even Bob's like three times bigger than Earth now. <laughs> Alright, so now that you've seen all of that, let, let's actually build a craft and try to get into orbit. Now, I actually did this yesterday and I managed to actually get into orbit, believe it or not, but... <laughs> to do that with one Kerbal, it took a rocket of like 2,000 tons. Like, that's the rocket you see right there. <laughs> so, I'm just trying to imagine what it would actually take to just even get to the moon or something like that. So, I, I actually have a quick say, so we'll go back to it. Yeah, Kerbinzilla. That, that's what I'm calling this thing, by the way, is Kerbinzilla. Because <laughs> it's just so huge, you know? So you see, we're in orbit right now, and our velocity is almost 13 kilometers per second, and... <laughs> you may notice we're actually in a pretty high orbit, and that's because, originally, the original version of this... I forgot to scale the mountains down with the terrain, so there were like 300 kilometer high mountains everywhere. And I actually crashed into one while I was in orbit. <laughs> so, now that I've fixed that, it shouldn't be a problem. So you see, we're just gonna accelerate here, but we're not gonna get far. I think we'd need, like, another 5,000 meters per second to actually escape this thing. Yeah, so we're just gonna run out of fuel pretty quick here. Alright, so let's just burn back to Kerbin now, because clearly we're not going to get anywhere. <laughs> so you can see, even just deorbiting takes a long time, because there's just so much Delta V you need to get rid of. It's like, that, that alone took like 200 meters per second to just barely reduce my orbit. And now we shall prepare for re-entry. Now in, in this in this mod I made, reentry for some reason it doesn't actually scale up like you'd think it would. You'd think I'd just burn up immediately, right? Because I'm going like 15 kilometers per second, but for some reason I barely experienced any reentry heating actually testing this out, so we should be completely fine. I mean keyword here should. <laughs> so we're gonna go in and hopefully not die. You know, Jeb, in tradition, is awfully happy about traveling through the atmosphere at 14 kilometers per second. You know, as he is. So, you know, you can see, like, we're already in the atmosphere, but like, we're, we're barely getting any re-entry heating at all. Which is... I, I still don't get why, but I guess it's... I guess it actually makes this possible. Because <laughs> otherwise, you would just immediately burn up and explode, you wouldn't be able to do anything. Just look at our velocity, though. That's crazy. You see the Gs are building up, too. Like, I have reentry heating on 120, but it, it still doesn't do anything, really. Let's see how many Gs we get, though. I remember last time I had a slightly steeper trajectory than this, and I got, like, 15 Gs or something. <laughs> it's 7, 8... Can we get 9 Gs? It looks like we can. Oh, 10? Maybe 10? 10 Gs, alright. <laughs> you know, Jeb looks surprisingly unaware of his situation, even though he's about to pass out. There he goes. 11 Gs. 
I, th I think I po I think I po popped out at about 11 G's last time, so I'll, c I'll cut to when we actually finish this. And there you go. Pretty bog standard water landing, but yeah, we did it. We didn't die. All right, so now you here you can see me building a craft to actually try and escape the gravity of this crazy ass carbon I made. So I I'm not gonna I'm gonna try not to use any nuclear or ion engines because I, I I still kind of feel like that's cheating because you know you just get way too much delta V. <laughs> <laughs> so we're just gonna use chemical engines and see how far we can get. Oh yes, rocket nuts, let's go. <laughs> I'll see you when this is actually built though. Alright, so now the rocket I made is finally built, and as you can see it's basically the same design as the other one I had before, just with a probe instead of a Kerbal, and that just by that we get a lot more Delta V. I think we have about 21 kilometers per second, which should be enough to escape. I mean, I, I got to orbit with about 15, and then I remember we needed about five more to actually leave. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. The actual launch into orbit went pretty well, apart from one thing, which we'll get to later, but you see during the ascent, we're actually we're actually achieving a pretty good profile here. Now, the atmosphere is actually twice as high as it normally is, so we need to pitch over about half as aggressively as usual. Actually, probably a bit less than that, because Kerbin's gravity will just pull us back down if we don't. Now, the thing that went wrong here, though, is that I... Apparently when I detached the fairing, it just made the rocket wobble around, like, borderline uncontrollably, and I was very worried that I would actually just lose so much delta V that I wouldn't be able to get to orbit, but... As it turns out, I actually had enough in excess that I was able to make it anyway, but... As you can see, like, even just in this sped-up footage, getting to orbit on this thing takes a very long time, like... It, it, I, it took me about 15 minutes from launch to actually get into orbit with this thing. <laughs> just because you have to spend all of that time firing the engines. But, as you can see, we, we do finally get into a low orbit of about 300 kilometers, and after that we can begin at least starting the escaper. Now, because this Kerbin is so huge and we have to burn 5,000 meters per second with such a low thrust to weight ratio, I had to split up this burn into like 10 different passes, so yeah, that was a lot of fun. See you on the flip side. Oh wow, stage separation event. Content. Alright, so about 5,000 meters per second later, you can finally see me doing the final escape earn to leave Kerbinzilla behind. And we've escaped. Now we can finally drift off into space and float there forever. Fun, let's do it. Alright, so, th this was a lot of fun to actually set up and record, so let me know if you guys want to see me tr actually try and get to the moon with this, because I feel like it'd be a really fun challenge. Or, you know, maybe not fun, just incredibly annoying, but, you know, I still think it would be interesting either way, so let me know if you want to see that. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching.